Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. Stack of information to get stuck into today. I'm gonna to go through my March monthly financials to let you know how last month went, which was actually my seventh month as a full-time online reseller. A lot of stuff to cover off today. We're gonna to have a look at the monthly revenue. We're gonna have a look at the monthly fees. We're gonna have a look at the inventory that I purchased, the sales platform performance, the final cash flow position, so what would have been my monthly paycheck, and also a check-in on my $100,000 in 2021 revenue for the end of the year. So with three months in, how am I going towards that $100,000 a year goal? Guys, I do these videos to try and help you guys out there. Hopefully it motivates and inspire you guys. Take a reflection on my numbers and adapt it to your own reselling business, whether or not you wanna scale by an extra $100 a week or have your own full-time reselling business yourself. A key to the growth is always having a look at the numbers behind the business. And I'm happy to bring that transparency to the channel and give you these numbers on a monthly basis. So fingers crossed, you do get some takeaways out of it. Let's dive into the first topic. All right, guys, the first thing that we're gonna have a look at is my gross revenue. So all the money that came into the business over the 31-day period for the month of March, if we pull the table up and have a look, I was able to sell 219 items, an increase of 33 items for the, from the month of February. Uh, total revenue, $9,105. That was an increase of $1,800. Uh, my average sale price was $34. That was an increase of about $1.50. And my cost of goods that sold, $1,683.50. So $345 more in a sense of the goods that sold. Profit margin, 75%. So that went up by 2% on last month. I am fully aware that last month, the month of February was a 28 day month and we are now in a 31 day month of March. But even on the averages, this is a huge increase. Last month was my best ever revenue month of $7,200 and I ballooned $1,800 to 9,100. So it's just been a huge jump in a 31 day period to hit the 9,000 for the very first time. And I'm super ecstatic about that. To do $100,000 a year, you need to be doing about eight and a half thousand. So this is the very first month that I've ever gone over the average for $100,000 a year. So I'm absolutely wrapped, 9,100. Um, some really key takeaways, if we wanted to touch on that for a quick second regarding revenue. I put a video out just last Tuesday around five daily habits that I'm doing to my eBay store that's helping me bring in some pretty consistent sales. I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but I'll put the link up here for you guys to check out after you've tuned into this one, um, because that's really what's resulted in this revenue growth. It's It's been doing those consistent daily habits, the five habits that I speak of in that video. So go and check that one out because no doubt that has been the catalyst for what has been a really good month in the sense of my sales. Let's have a look at the sales platform performance now. So ultimately where I sold my items for the month of March, and if we pull the table up, I ended up selling 19 items on Facebook Marketplace, an increase of seven from the previous month. eBay, 195 items, an increase of 23. And Instagram, selling to viewers of the YouTube channel, I had five sales for the month of March, an increase of five. So look guys, I spoke a lot in the last month's uh, financials video where I wanted to increase my Facebook Marketplace sales because of the fees associated with eBay. I really wanted to try and reduce the overall fee percentage. And to a degree, I've done that. I've, inc I've increased with you know seven sales on Facebook Marketplace. But in the end, there was a lot of time associated to cross-listing on a Facebook Marketplace I found. And while eBay was always the priority, I probably didn't get to list as many items back on a Facebook Marketplace as I would have liked to. So it only increased by seven. It wasn't enough as to what I wanted at the beginning of the month, but I did put a lot of time this month into building a website to try and connect with you guys here on YouTube with my trip to the thrift videos every single Thursday. A portal that you guys can go on to to buy items out of that video if you are interested. And that actually took a lot of time to make. So while I was listing on eBay, I was also building that website. And that pretty much took up the entirety of the month of March. So look, Facebook Marketplace will continue to be a focus, no doubt about it. I do a lot of furniture on there, but with the website now up and running, I think I can put my time back into cross-listing on Marketplace. All right, guys, let's have a look at the nasty stuff. Let's have a look at the fees, the money that you gotta take out for fees and postage. If we pull the table up, $665 was the fee, the invoice that I had to pay to eBay. That was a decrease of $187 from the previous month. PayPal was $150, that was down $60, but I have jumped onto managed payments from March 15. So that's why PayPal is pretty much about a half a month's worth with that figure. Postage, $1,621, that was an increase 
increase of $401. Uh, and total overall, from a fee perspective, $2,437. I paid an extra $153 in fees and postage. There was obviously 33 more items sold for this month. So to only increase fees and postage by $153, I think that's a really good result. There's obviously a bit of an anomaly here in the sense that it's a slightly weird pay cycle, Feb 15 to March 15. So it doesn't truly reflect every single item that's sold in the month of March. But for transparency, I put in whatever my eBay invoice was for the month. So $665 was that figure for me. Look, fees are always gonna be a part of the business. If you're ever gonna try and avoid fees or try and lower your fees, that's a good thing. Um, I'm not too you know, disheartened with these numbers. I think they're pretty accurate, around about 14% overall. Um, you've just gotta pay them. It's just part of the game. And that's where I'm sitting for the month of March. Next thing I wanna have a look at guys is my inventory. So whether the item that I bought has sold or is yet to sell, how much money did I spend on buying inventory to add to my eBay store for the entire month? If you pull the table up and have a look at that, 333 items is what I purchased, which was actually 16 less than the previous month. $2,379 is what I spent on items. That was a decrease of $89.32. And my average purchase price ended up being pretty much the same, $7.14 per item. And that was an increase uh, of seven cents. So look, I think this is probably almost the most interesting table out of absolutely everything today because I've actually ended up buying less yet my revenue has gone up to 9,000 or over $9,000. So it wasn't due to the fact that I was buying more items, listing more items. It was actually due down to the fact that I was managing my store better. I was manipulating photos, I was touching up titles, I was doing the end relist strategy, I was adding international postage to my orders. Everything in that five daily habits video that I spoke of, adding international postage as I touched on, all these little bits and pieces are things that have resulted in me increasing my sales. So I found that incredibly interesting to see a decrease in items purchase, yet a large increase in my overall sales. And I think that's a really good takeaway for you guys out there as well. If you've put all the time and the attention into adding 500 plus items into your eBay store, utilize that and actually start manipulating it to get those items sold before you go and buy and add new items in. Um, just a really cool takeaway. I was pretty surprised when I finally saw those numbers. All right, so we've had a look at the revenue. We've had a look at the fees. We've looked at the postage. And now we've looked at what I've actually bought from an inventory perspective. So how does that balance out? Where does it finish? Well, let's have a look at the table. What would be my overall cash flow? So you could almost say what my actual paycheck would be for the month of March. If we pull the table up, you'll see here that it was $9,000 in revenue at the top left and the total fees, postage and inventory purchased $4,816. That leaves me with an overall net cash flow position of $4,289. You can add YouTube into the mix as well. I put a lot of time into my YouTube channel channel with three new videos right here every single week. That was an increase in monetized revenue from Google AdSense of over 23%. So I hit $615 in earnings. When you add the 4,200 and the 615, that works out to close to 5,000. I think it's about $4,900. Tax does need to come out of that figure. That is a pre-tax figure. Uh, but from an annual salary perspective, if I did that every single month, it would be the equivalent of a fifty-eight, fifty-nine thousand dollar a year salary. So guys, I am absolutely thrilled with my final cash flow position, no doubt about it. I've never really even got to the low 40s from a, an overall annual salary perspective. So to get that now over the $50,000 mark that I speak of, I've finally, after seven months, had a month that was at least where I want it to be moving forward. So look, I'm super happy with almost $5,000 in gross cash flow for myself as a paycheck after putting back into the business, after obviously accounting for fees and postage. Um, you really can do it. You really can scale the business to be a full-time job. And this month has really allowed me to see that. So I'm absolutely ecstatic to have close to $5,000 this month in the bank account. Um, I can go and use that to buy more items, but I can now look at that and make that a benchmark from how I live my life moving forward. That can be a figure that I work towards every single month. It allows me to get out of home uh, and get on with uh, obviously getting on with my life and, and having this as my full-time job. So um, super pumped with that. The last thing that I thought I'd check on as well is my $100,000 a year in revenue, uh, which is the goal that I've got. And obviously this month with $9,000, it went above the average for the very first time. 
when you compare it, and if we have a look at the table, to the months one and two, January and February, if you add all of those up, you'll see 7,029, basically 7,300. I've done $23,000 in overall revenue and that works out to an average of 7,811. So I'm pretty much about $500 a month off being on target. So I'm about $1,500 off where I should be. And that's not a lot. I do think I'm in a pretty good position with the growth and the scaling that I'm doing now to hopefully go over $100,000 in revenue. Um, now I'm aware on a, on a financial year that 75,000 GST does come into the equation. I'm, I'm fully aware of that. And this financial year, I'm probably not gonna quite hit 75,000 with a couple of early quiet months to begin this whole journey. But certainly next year, there will come a point where GST will come into the equation. But look, $100,000 a year in revenue is certainly on the cards. It's certainly on track. Obviously, 9100 this month really helps that whole process. And if I can keep building on the 9100 I think I'll be able to get that 100000 in revenue, which will be just a huge achievement. You really can, you know, if you set your mind to something, you really can do it. And uh, hopefully, these next 12 months will be proof of that. Um, so guys, hopefully you've enjoyed those numbers there. That was a full recap of every single piece of the financials of, uh, of the business here for me, seven months into the journey. Like I touched on at the beginning of the video, I really hope all of these numbers can help motivate and inspire you guys out there to try and scale your own business. If, like I said, if it was an extra 100 bucks a week, or if you wanna make it a full-time job, it's looking deep into your numbers and really record keeping your numbers that are gonna help you get to the positions that you wanna be in financially. So that's the process that I kinda of go through um, to get the, the you know, monthly positions and then I reflect with this sort of a video and I go again for another month. And here we are on April 6th and we've already had a pretty good six day start to the month here as well. So hope you've enjoyed the video guys. I will end it there. Hit the like button if you got anything out of it. Look forward to catching you the next one. Trip to the thrift on Thursday. It's always my favorite. Look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much.